Hey guys, welcome to my first voiceover tutorial. I hope that these types of videos are helpful and explain my process a bit better. Please let me know if they do in the comment section down below. Alright, so I'm starting this painting by first using the darkest color, which is black. And what I'm doing is I'm filling in the triangle here and also adding the black color to where I feel the darkest shadows are going to be in the lily petals and also in the eye. For this part, you'd probably want to use masking tape or painter's tape because it will save you a lot of time when doing a geometric shape like this, but because I ran out of it, I had to use white paint and I just got a really flat brush and really cleaned up the edges to make sure they were perfectly straight. I also filled in the rest of the background with white to make sure that there wasn't like two shades of white, like the color white of the paper and also the paint. I just wanted to make sure they were consistent. This also makes for a really good base layer for when we're going to put the shadows on the white border where the lily petals are coming out of the triangle. I'll explain this further when we get to that point of the painting. So I'm starting with the flowers by placing a muted purple tone as well as a muted blue tone. Because I'm using gouache, the underlying layers tend to mix with whatever color you're putting on top. Some people like this, some people don't. I like it, that's why I'm using it. So when you put a color on top of these tones, it'll create a more multi-dimensional and realistic look rather than only using a gray or black to create the shadows. In real life, you can see this a lot where there's more blue tones in the shade. Then after that, I'm using white and black paint to make those colors darker or lighter. Where the petal curves and catches a shadow, I'm using a damp brush with a small amount of black and that will mix in with the blue color I already placed in that area. And since it's gouache, it'll mix together and make a really cool toned shadow that we want. And the rest of this is really repetition, so basically you're just going to keep doing that same process throughout the rest of these petals. Because I'm doing a smaller painting, I am using a much smaller brush than you would normally use for this stage of a painting. Also, I'm using gouache, and gouache in itself is nothing like oil paint. It doesn't blend very easily, so you do have to go in with a super damp brush and manually go in and really make sure that those colors melt together in order to create a gradient. Gouache does tend to be a little bit, not chalky, but it's very opaque. It's like watercolor basically, but with more pigment. So you have to go back in and really work those gradients and spend some time blending with a smaller brush.
Right here, I'm layering in some more white and a little bit more purple. I didn't put as much purple as I would have liked. I put a little bit too much blue, so I'm just adding that in along with the white. And that just mixes together because gouache brings up the underneath layers too. So in the end, it just creates a nice blend of color that I'm looking for. Also, when I say you should use a damp brush for this, I quite literally mean almost dry, barely wet. I actually use a drop of water and I put it on my desk easel and I just dip my brush into that drop and wipe it off a tiny bit to get it that perfect amount of dampness in order to get these gradients to be as smooth as possible. For this part, I'm making the stems inside the flower where the pollen is held. So I just got a green color, I did just the basic overall color I wanted and after doing that I did a really deep brown color and just kind of stippled the paint on top of those stems. After that I got a black color and I shaded the sides of the green stems and did the same with the white and got a super damp brush and just blended them together. And then after that I got a lighter brown color that was more orange toned and just stippled that on top of where I did the brown. Also because now there's another object inside the flower, I put more black underneath the stems where the petal behind them is.
Okay, now we're at my favorite part, which was the eyeball. So I first went in where the iris is and did a really deep brown color and blended that into the black where I placed that around the iris. Then for the whites of the eyes, because this is such a dimly lit photo reference I'm using for this whole painting, I am using a really blue toned white color, kind of what I used for the lilies. And I'm also blending in red in the corners of the eyes because it will create like a gradient as it goes towards the tear ducts. And I also want the eye to look a little bit more irritated because I'm gross and I <laughs> just placed more red and did some veins along the whites of the eye. And this in itself is kind of a lot of back and forth with trying to create the perfect gradient and color I wanted for the whites of the eyes. Also something to notice, if you look at eyeballs, like in real life, outside the iris, there's going to be a ring of blue. Not sure why, ask a scientist, not me, um, but it occurs naturally with eyeballs, so I put a little bit of a muted blue around the iris, just barely, just enough to make it look real. Then after that, I'm placing some white along the waterline where the bloody tear is going to be. And I realized like that's a lot of white. I got a little highlight happy here. So I wound up blending that out and it worked out because it melded with the red and created more of a three dimensional look rather than just like splotches of white. I also included some black to shade the tear. More towards the bottom of the teardrop. Finally, I'm adding the bloody drops on the petals of the lilies. So I'm just starting with a base layer of red and I'm just detailing that in where I would feel the natural gravity would pull the drop down the petals. That's why some of them have kind of an oblong shape rather than just a dot. Then I'm adding the shadows underneath the petals where they're coming out of the triangle. And I'm just doing this because it adds more visual interest. It makes the lilies look like they're coming out at you. And for the bloody droplets on the petals, I'm putting a little bit of shadow underneath and around the drops. Something else I included just to make it look more three-dimensional was some complimentary blood splatters on the bottom of the painting and I also included some shading where the shadow would fall on top of the splatters. And then of course my favorite part, we are adding some highlights on the droplets. The meaning of this painting meant a lot to me and I'm so glad that others felt the same about it. It means a lot. The past does not define you is basically the inspiration of this painting. I really hope that this voiceover helped explain my process a bit better and please let me know if you would like to see more of these kinds of videos and I'll see you again soon. Bye.